new game show. Uh, give me a guitar riff. Welcome to Ancient Survivor. We sent five young teens to ancient Greece and see who dies last. I think this is gonna be fun. Yo, my name's Clyde. I like uh nothing except hanging out with girls. I think there's gonna be a lot of hotties in ancient Greece. My name is Judy. I know that the guys don't like wear anything like down there, so this is gonna be great. My name's Brad. <laughs> I just like getting high, dude, and like I bet the Greeks are also good in that. My name is Michael. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Michael, Michael, has, Michael has no expectation. Ooh, or maybe it's like a uh, 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 like a bachelor type show. Either everyone has to find love, or they choose like one single Greek man or woman, and send said like t- t- twenty modern day people. That would be crazy. So this Greek man is like running for his life. He has no idea what's happening, and like these these modern women keep popping up, and like got things like they got like glasses and tattoos and piercings and stuff. And he has no idea what's <laughs> Get happening. Back harpies! What is going on? Oh God! Stop following me! I've been cursed by Zeus. <laughs> I mean Aphrodite. Hey everybody, welcome to Speculation Station. I'm Joe, here as always with my buddy Eric. Hello, hello! And we are here to make a movie out of a video game. Now, it can Mm. be a series or just one title, and we're not just going for any type of movie here. A mediocre movie. A movie that scores 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. Or higher, I guess. Or higher. We're aiming for the higher, but, you know, we at least want to reach that low bar. Yeah. Alongside some of your favorite movies, such as... Some movies from the 90s, some movies from the 2000s, and let us not forget, some movies from the 80s. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's most favorite complex game, I guess? Strategy, maybe, is the word you're looking for? Uh, It's not really a strategy game. As someone who's never played it. It's definitely got a high learning curve. Yeah, I went to school for it. We're talking about civilization. I'm going to stop goofing. We'd be goofing all day. We're talking about civilization. Sid Meier's civilization. Now, Sid Meier is... only... He has... He has the rights to it. It's only his. Only he also his. has the rights to pirates. The word pirates. Sid Meier's pirates. The idea... <laughs> Sid Meier's has... In a, in a strange, like, corporate 1984, seized control of the idea of pirates. <laughs> and civilization. And the idea of civilizations. Which means... Uh, everything's on fire. And <laughs> Sid he also got the word. Yeah, he he also got the word water. So just gonna have to kind of stay on fire because can't you gotta pay him fifteen dollars per glass of water? I'm living off Monster Energy drink like Sam Porter Bridges and Death Stranded. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite video game. Oh, sorry. Let me say that again. Uh, Sid Meier's Hideo Kojima's Death Stranded. <laughs> Sid Meier got him too. <laughs> He got Kojima. He got he got everything. Sid Meier's is eating up the world. So civilization, oh, what would you describe civilization as? Someone just knocked on my door. Oh no, <laughs> it's Sid Meier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, sorry. <laughs> civilization is, I mean, you basically play civilizations and you try to win. Uh, it, it's very, it's not that similar to Risk, but there's very similar in concept, I guess. Where so it's you, it's a stra- it's a competitive strategy game. It's a competitive strategy game. Yeah, you can play it with people, or you can play it with AI if you don't have any friends willing to spend the six hours necessary to uh, play a full game. Uh, there's a lot of ways to win. Not like Risk, where you can just kind of destroy everyone. <laughs> uh, you can win through uh, warfare. You can win culturally. You can win um, with scientific victory, where you are the first to launch a rocket. To the moon, not just a, any rocket. <laughs> Throw a rocket. Just let it go. Uh, you could also win. Um, I don't. I. I'll have to admit. I'm using most of my Civ knowledge comes from uh, Civ Five. Uh, let me see Civ victories. I promise. I'm gonna promise. This is the only time I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google. You have scientific, like I said, cultural domination, which is killing everyone. Uh, religion. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a flat score victory, which is. Uh, 
uh, not particularly interesting, and then uh, diplomacy, which is basically uh, you have to win a vote in the United Nations, uh, and then kind of, I guess you're like the chairman of the UN, which means you have all the sway in the world, which just like real life. (laughs) Uh, anyway, there's a lot, there's a, a lot of ins and outs, and obviously we're not going to get into all that because that would be geez, me talking about civilization while Joseph doesn't talk. It's a podcast. But the real question is, how do we convert any? Uh, how do we convert yeah. all, if not any, of that into something that is worth a movie? I'm glad you asked. Hey, remember when we thought Space Invaders was hard? Yeah. Welcome to a actual board game. <laughs> so. The idea that's been rolling around in my big old empty head is we do a sort of... Uh, you ever see Bill and Ted? Yeah. So we do a Bill and Ted kind of, but we also do like a Hunger Games. Ooh, so we're going to need to explain how those two mix. Are you, sh- are you sure you want me to explain? You didn't get that from me just saying, <laughs> saying Bill and Ted and Hunger Games? Because all, all I'm connection? imagining is Bill and Ted showing up at the wrong place in the wrong time, and now they're there with a bunch of rich people who want them dead. Actually, none of that. Uh... What I'm imagining is that all you... Because at Civ, obviously, you play as, like, a ton of civilizations that didn't exist at the same time. Like, you can be in, like, 3000 BC playing as America, and your neighbor is, you know, Babylon. So, there's no historical accuracy. Mm. So, I'm saying somehow time travel has been invented, and... I think somehow time travel has been abused. Abused. Yeah, and all of these historical leaders have been taken into the future where they must compete for survival in a simulated world. Oh, I like that. It could be like some some big, huge, like, uh, big, a big experiment for entertainment. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's what I got. I actually really like that idea. I like the concept of even having some kind of, quote unquote, celebrity characters where we just have actual, like, leaders that, of course, were known in history for either heinous acts yeah. or... Really well, good I mean, di- literally, diplomacy uh, or something. Just off the top of my head, I mean, because obviously, like, you play as America, but you also play as a specific leader. Yeah. So, like Persia, for instance, you play as Darius the First. Uh, the Hun Empire or the Hun- the Hunnic Empire, yeah. you play as Attila. Uh, America, you play as I think Washington, and in, in five, and then I think you're Teddy Roosevelt in six. So it's like, you know, Gandhi in India and so on and so forth. So right. it's like the, and so it'd be the, all these different people from it's different like the biggest time periods. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Smash Brothers of the, of history. <laughs> hey, that works too. I think there would be the obvious joke that somebody gets out and they get or two people get out at the same time and they take off the helmets and they actually go and start fighting each other. Just in the actual yeah. So that's the concept I, I, I've got. What do you think? I actually really like it. I think that we would definitely need to make this more of a comedy if we went that route, but considering the concept that the game is a is a strategy game with these comedic elements already kind of built in. Not not saying that it's naturally comedic, but the no, fact but that you like, can yeah. do this and it's wacky, but the game lets you do it, I think it works. Yeah, I think it could be fun. Uh, I think it should have like a, a Hunger Games aesthetic to it. Where like you have this arena and you know it 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 could be kind of a, a like a sieve world you know you have all these like kind of holographic hexagons with you know grass and and sand and mountains and stuff right. and then like outside of that it's like this black like kind of sci fi uh, uh, not evil but you know kind of dark aesthetic where the the overseers quote unquote are the ones who kidnap these people from history are like watching them and oh and toying with I got them. an idea that you might not like. Let's hear it. What if it is very much like a Hunger Game thing, a Hunger Games thing, where there is a definitive winner? So all of the losers are put back in their respective times without like any that. memory of this happening. But the winner gets to keep the knowledge of it, and we could make this stupid. Mm. Like we could define one character winner or something at the end, and you know, like we could go out stupid, and it could be like Abe Lincoln or something, and it just cuts at him, and he's like, puts his finger to his forehead, like, I know, you know, like. <laughs> Because if it's a comedy, we can can make fun of everything and do this. this Mr. Lincoln, where were you? We were so worried sick. Hmm. (laughs) Have you gentlemen heard of uranium? (laughs) That's fun, yeah. Or no, Hitler wins or something, you know, just really messes things up. So there's like a, uh, there's kind of a, I get, I mean, obviously this doesn't happen in real life. 
or like the real world, quote unquote. Right. But like, yeah, that's fun. I think I think we should show up when someone, whenever someone loses, like there's a flash of light, and then we see it put back in the real time, and like there's a there's a second of clarity. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, and then they're and then, and then we cut back. Or well, actually, what if they were put back? With the knowledge of it, I think like, that could be funnier. Since they're yeah, since they lost. Okay, so maybe the prize would be actually something like an object or something. The prize could be having all this knowledge of you know how things were, you know, rocket ships, or if you, your angst of civilization, industrialism, you know, communism. Okay, so if you democracy. if you got out early, then of course you're not leaving with anything, you know. But right. if you stayed in the game long enough and you you get off and you're like, you know, the third person left in the or in the thing and you're in third place and you get knocked off, you may still have a lot of scientific knowledge that you didn't have before. Yeah. So that I mean I guess that that's kind of the incentive to win for these leaders. I like that. Because then that could be you could even have it addressed to the point where you'd have a character I you know, i.e. like Gandhi or something who'd be like, No, I don't I don't want this power. I don't want this you know, and then He'd just be, he's forced into it, you know, or or there's something, of course, if it's a comedy, we can have him interested in something that makes no sense, you know, it's like. Well, I mean, the joke is, about Civ Five is that Gandhi AI always nukes you. <laughs> so, like, maybe could, Gandhi could be this very peaceful, well, this might be, this might be a bit, uh, uh disrespectful <laughs> in movie form. Or he could just see it as a game, you know, it's just like he realizes it's a game and he starts having fun with it or something, you know. He tries to break out. <laughs> Although, I mean, to be fair, Gandhi, you know, definitely existed during nuke time. Yeah, yeah. Towards the end of his life, at least. But he was too old at that point. He went up to try and touch one. He says, I wonder what it is. And then he <laughs> <just> what? disappeared. <laughs> what power? <laughs> he faded in the dust. <laughs> That's why we don't have his body. Gandhi with the wind. <laughs> All right. So with this, I'm thinking like a... a from what I know about, yeah, like it does. We don't really have a protagonist so much as we have a lot of different storylines kind of going on at once. Yeah, which I can't really think of any movie that's done that. A few off the top of my head. not to yeah, not to say like oh we're the first. I just can't. Th- I know there are some. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. But it's sort of like a battle royale. The movie. I think that would be. I, I think that's where the humor is. Is we don't have a specific protagonist until there's a de- a winner declared at the end. Not even that they were the protagonist, because we could even throw out, of course, like the this person won, and everybody's like, "What that person?" You know, kind of, kind of thinking. It could be, maybe the twist could be it's Gandhi. Like <laughs> everything's always so peaceful, and then like they hear a plane overhead. They what's that? And then they see a nuke fall. Up. Yeah, and you see Gandhi in the shadows, like mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like Yoda. <laughs> he's just sitting in the darkness. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool. So. Uh, where do we start then? I think we start with showcasing a character getting taken to this thing. And we need to be careful to make sure that it's not expressed that this is the main character, but that like we see this we happen could, with we other do characters almost too. A, we could do almost a montage. How about, what if we start it and it's like, we start in the future and we see this like board of evil people, quote unquote, they're like, do we have the list prepared? They can say yes, yes, master. <laughs> go, what you, go, minions. slavery doesn't exist in the future. Well, like a respectful master, not a slavery master. They're like, go kidnap the, go kidnap the figures, and they like all run off, and then it's like cut to you know Abraham Lincoln or whoever in the Oval Office, and then like you have two minions come back. Come here, give me a Lincoln. <laughs> and they, they grab over his head, head, but it doesn't yeah, go all just, the way down because of his top hat. <laughs> Stupid. And they, yeah, they could have him. And, you know, we see that we see you know Catherine the Great in Russia. Well, Ra- 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 two of them try to jump out to get a teller. He stabs them. And two more just come and get him, <laughs> coming from behind. Yeah, we got reinforcements. <laughs> we knew the risks. Yeah, and you you got you know Nebuchadnezzar back in Babylon. And, uh, all Every time things. I hear Nebuchadnezzar, I just think of the freaking vegetable. I know you do. I'm sorry. I don't forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> you should know, you, you should know better. Yeah, all right. And then they're all, you know, we we Gandhi and all these guys, Darius and 
I am King Darius. Ramses the second, all these all these good old boys right. and girls. Elizabeth from y- the UK. Putin. The first. Putin. Nope, not Putin. <laughs> Stalin? Cat Catherine the Great? Empress? Uh 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 Are you trying to are you trying to think of important leaders in other countries? I don't want to go too modern. I mean, we probably just you, you know you got Caesar in Rome, and you got uh, Nero oh man, in Rome. Other? Nero also in Rome. No, obviously, I think we should we will diversify the cast, but I think it should be a huge roster. And of course, we're going to have one point yeah, like, like where it just kind of pans over, and we see all these people as they're collected, and it's just kind of like, oh, you can recognize certain figures just by their appearance. Yeah, yeah. Like you got Abraham Lincoln's big old top hat. <laughs> He's in the back. <laughs> The bag's still on it. You can't get it on. It's too high. <laughs> it's too high. Well, hey, as far as we didn't talk about this before, are we thinking uh, live action, animated? I, if we want to do, if we're not, here's my honest opinion. If we're not intent on trying to find people that actually look like the characters and just focusing on making the characters recognizable, we should probably go animated because then we can make them characters kind of the way that Civ makes them look where, yeah, they look like the people, but they're a little... They're a little cartoony, you know? Yeah. Because it's know. not, in Civ, I'm it's in not one to one. You know, it's not like this guy exactly looks like him. It's like, oh, it's his right, eyes but are remember, a little Right, but remember Bill and Ted did that. And, like, it wasn't, oh, that's not Ab- that's not real Abraham Lincoln, you know? No, I understand that. And we could always go that route. But we've got to think about what are we relying on live action for. If the movie is going to be a majority of this kind of aesthetic of... I guess, yeah, if it's going to be kind of chaotic board game we stuff. We definitely want to go with animation to allow for that. Not, not like I'm not talking on a budget sense here, but I am talking on a believable sense. Because if the characters are already animated, then you can do a bunch of stuff in the world that fits in. Yeah, you can do like a three, all right, like 3D animation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 3D animated. I like it. Um, so So... They're all brought here, and like we're back in the future, and we see uh, this leader, and his name can be uh, he can be just called SM, and we won't get into why that is. Uh, <laughs> What's uh, that? He's got a bunch of little things on his fingers that say "I own everything." <laughs> I'm everyone, and uh, uh, you know he's sitting up on his throne, and we see these leaders popping, pew, 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 pew. and then he stands up and he says, "Welcome to civilization." Or, you know, something like that. Uh-huh. Very very over the top. Yeah. And I, th- I think we should have it be like, like we're watching from Lincoln's perspective. And he's like, kind of talking to old American. And he's like, welcome to civilization. Here's the board game. And then, we, you know, we cut to Gandhi and he's talking an Indian. Oh, and, you know, he, that would actually be really interesting. Yeah. That would be, I like that idea a lot for the sake of like the, the premise of showing that everybody's getting spoken to in their own language. Yeah. And, and maybe like, I mean, obviously, we're probably going to want to set it in English. But, like, with that, we imply, like, when Gandhi talks to Lincoln or whomever, you know, they're talking in English with accents. Indian accent, Russian accent, Persian accent, what right. have you. But then we would assume that they're hearing it in their own languages. Right. Because we set it, we set it up mm-hmm. in the beginning. That's good. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I think we honestly just go, like, right into it. It's, you know, 15 yeah. minutes in and we're already playing the game. I think so good old, like, good old SM gives a little bit of an explanation, you know, but something basic yeah. and easy to follow. Just like you've all you are the greatest here. leaders throughout time of your country. Yeah. And we, uh, we will put you to the test. If you can't tell, I'm gesticulating a lot, <laughs> uh, for SM here. Uh, and so he's like, we will put you in random locations along a predetermined map. And see how you do in the field of civilization. Right, yeah. And so then they get set up and it's what do you think? Should it be something where they're at like stations or they're just in they're in the virtual world now? Yeah, I think they should just teleport. I mean, this is like so far in the future that like anything's possible. You know. I think it so, should yeah, be interesting just... if like Oh man, it'd be it'd be kind of interesting to see one individual not adapt. And just see them start freaking out, like get the total culture shock. But the question <laughs> yeah. is, what character would we want to put in that? Because that be, that should be a joke. I think it'd be great. Probably like an ancient, yeah, I like that, like an ancient character. Like he tries to run, and they just send him back in time to where he came from. <laughs> he busts out of wherever he was. Like he busts out of a closet. Like runs into like, it, runs into a tree or what something. What are you doing in that? What? 
Who are you? <laughs> yeah. uh, should there be a... I know we already talked about this, but should there be a prize? Should there be a prize? Should there, there be a There either needs to prize? be a prize or a punishment. I like prize better than punishment. Okay. But it... I mean, I guess it could be something that, like, you know, breaks the timelines because, you know, it doesn't really matter. But Well, yeah, I think we could. I really think the prize should be, like, time travel. Like, we will give you the knowledge of time travel. And so, like, every nation is like, this is this is something only, you know, could ever be dreamed to be achieved. Or it's a god-like power or something, you know. And, of course, I think we can make a joke where there's, like, an Egyptian character goes up and says, so... These gods, you know, are telling us to do, you know, it's because they <laughs> it doesn't understand. Right, right. I mean, no one understands. All right. Yeah. I, I was thinking like a, a, the book of Utopia, like a, basically an instruction guide. That would actually be funnier. It'd be like how to make the perfect civilization. Yeah. But the problem with that is like you have someone like Attila who's like wants to conquer stuff. He wouldn't. I definitely it. think it should be like time travel then. Because that's something, unless we can make something else that's more universally lost yeah, it's after. Just so lost a- after. It's, so, it's so abstract. Um, you know, like, how do you, how do you, say, how do you win time travel? Good point. Because you could say the knowledge of time travel or something. If you could say, like, all of life, oh, all of life's answers, and it's a book, you know? And it, it, you may think that uh, some individual wouldn't want it, but it'd be, it's all of the answers, everything. And you could even like showcase, that. you could even showcase that in the beginning where it's like, it's, it's just over the top, you know, this thing. And they could call it the manual. Yeah. Like, like the it's manual. Go, it's this, glowing it's like this book. golden shining book. And he like puts it and down. Attila's like, Ooh, I want, it will teach me the secrets and of And like warfare. Attila's got his back turned, hunched over. And he's like, I don't care. I don't need any kind of, you know stupid book or something and maybe as sim has explained it, he's like the key to diplomacy in culture and warfare and until it goes oh i like that yeah, yeah there we go warfare i think whoever the winner is though at the end yeah it, i know i'm jumping way ahead but i really that's want this okay. to be that's kind of what we do this joke yeah would be at the end they open it up and they go oh and then they just you know like <laughs> oh all right who would who have thought yeah it's just like a very subtle reaction to it you know that's funny. Yeah, I like that. I was thinking, of, <laughs> my goof was it's in a, it's in the wrong language, but that's not. I mean, it's <laughs> funny, but yours is better. Implied. Yeah, yours is definitely better. All right, so I think hey, maybe they shouldn't teleport. Maybe it should be more like a, uh, uh, like they ride over it in like pods and stuff. So you, th- that way you can kind of get a grasp of the of the size of this place. Yeah. It's like they're looking over it, and, and the thing, everything's like materializing from the from the nothing. Yeah, yeah, and like pic- pixels and stuff are like drawing over and stuff. I like that. And then they're just put randomly, and then the game, be- and then you know you hear SM's voice over the over the, <laughs> the loudspeaker. I guess. Do you think? I think there should be some kind of like a UI we see from each perspective. Like when we're looking at the people, it's kind of like the Tony Stark floating UI in front of them thing, and so it's like different things <laughs> that they can hit to do different. Like, actions. none of them understand. Right. Most of them don't understand. And so that would also be part of the joke. Like, so we have the one, the guy that just freaks out, and then there's a joke of another character. I think we could do something easily with, like, uh, some some closer to modern, where yeah. they're just not understanding. They get just frustrated, and they, like, slap something, and it's like, exiting game. And they're like, what? And then they... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or they're like, D- are you sure you want to destroy your city? And they're like, no, no, no. And they're waving their hands and they like hit it. Wave confirmed. Goodbye. Has, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But then every once in a while we can have funny. SM pop up as like a little video feed of the black figure, you know. Yeah. And it's like, so why are we doing this? You know, and like, so when a natural disaster happens, which I don't know, is that a thing in the games? That's not a thing. Oh, so it's not like Sim City or Sim City. No. Oh. Okay, well, then mean. definitely we can have him come up and explain things as... Or as could, things yeah, work. it could just be more of an audio thing. Yeah. Uh, I think it would also be funny if, like, Elizabeth immediately grasps it. Oh, yeah, I think I think we should obviously have some like, characters. She's like, oh, I yeah. understand. She just... Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, all right. So I, I, I've been thinking of, like, some little, like, story threads and stuff we can kind of weave throughout this. You know, I think, obviously... Like we should have characters like fighting each other and stuff we like that. We should have two characters fall in love. Two, ooh, how about that? And then we have you know an alliance. I think we should have a character try to break out. Like, yeah, you if know, I can, try if to I can get out and steal the book, then I don't need to be here. 
Yeah, or just like try to leave. <laughs> that would like, be I good. will not be part of this game. And obviously, the SM's loving it. He's like, yeah, try it. <laughs> so you have all these uh, connected threats. Although, I mean, would it be too... Would people not be able to relate if there's no definitive protagonist, do you I think? I disagree. Okay, so I think we need to treat this more like a... I don't know how to word this other than we create it in the sense of we focus on the main character is not the protagonist. The main character that we go to back and we see so often would be SM. So we're following the antagonist, but we're relating to the characters and their struggles through the the individuals that we see bits and pieces of. And I think since we're not dealing with an original like story here, we're literally mashing history together. I definitely yeah. think we don't need a main character to pull it together. We just need like, oh, I recognize that person and I like that individual for who they were in history. Or I think yeah. that individual okay. is funny here. And like SM is overlooking it and he, you know, he's like, ah, I see Catherine has developed agriculture or something. Right. And then, we, yeah, I think every once in a while we're going to cut back and we're going to see him in this big room, you know, looking at all these different screens and stuff. You know, and it's well. If 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 SM is going to be our, uh, you know, quote unquote protagonist, or really just the character we spend the most time with, yeah. cumulatively. Uh, not that we're going to spend a ton of time with him; just he's the one we spend the most time with. Yeah. Uh, should he have like an arc or anything at all, or should everything go his way since he's you know kind of this antagonist? I think character? he should. I think things should not go his way, but they should still work out in the end for him. Not so because like no we one like him, but it's and like, like some of the people, like we could say a large, like a large sum of people. Because how many players are usually in a regular game of Civ? Usually it's like eight to ten, but we can, I mean, we can bump it up and have like twenty or 30. sure. But I think what we could do is if we start out with like forty or fifty, and all obviously, obviously not all of them have to be recognizable characters. But we look at people in history, and they're and as he's explaining, you know, it said these are famous people in history, and then we get a bunch of them led by some famous individuals that we don't really want to be a part of it, it i.e. we could throw Hitler or something in there, you know, just for the joke, and be like, no, I will, you know, I don't want this, I don't want to partake in this, I'm not doing it, you know, and they kind of revolt up, and he's like, eh, whatever, and he just sends them back, you know, and then that's how we get the smaller group, is because maybe they're placed in their spots, and they just start trying to go against it, and he's like, no, this isn't how this is supposed to work. <laughs> or maybe his system is just infallible. Or maybe, So we yeah. can't, you know, they can't really break out. Like, the only thing they can do is win. And, and maybe, I mean, what if SM was kind of... He almost deifies these leaders. So he's like... Like, as much as we have the symbolism of, like, him being a god above them, like, he's like, oh, Caesar did this? I didn't expect that. I like that a you lot, know, like, yeah. Like, he's really into it. He's like, oh, this is so much fun. I like that. because Well, then we could even almost create a duality in this character where when he's talking to them, he's... He is their god in that viewpoint. Yeah. But then when he's just watching them, you know, he's like got a little thing of popcorn. He's like giddy. He's like, ooh. Yeah. And maybe maybe his art, quote unquote, could be like whoever the winner is. Like they say something to him and he's like, he's like, I understand. You know, it's like it's a moment of sobriety for yeah, him. Yeah, I like, well, he, he comes out to give them the manual. And we see, of course, we would, as the audience kind of would have seen glimpses of them. We see he's not what we expected, you know. And he comes out, he's like happy, and he's like, oh, I, I didn't exactly know it would be you, I but I'm happy it win. is. I said, yeah, I hoped, oh, this was so much fun. And then maybe they're like, we are not to be toyed around, leaders are not toys. And, you know, or it's something, a, it's whatever like, it is. Well, yeah, and whoever it is can say something, you know, heartwarming and, and edifying and everything, you know. So he learns from it. He, I like He it. learns something useful. And then the person opens up the book and goes, huh. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Huh. Little known no, uh, fact about history. I can't read. <laughs> you know, it's a, it could be any character, you know? Just no, I think it. I, no, I think I, I like your goof where it's just, ah, all right. <laughs> Especially if they're can't... supposed to be like this wise character. <laughs> wow, would you look at <laughs> one of the thought to do that? <laughs> all right. Yeah, so let's, let's kind of. If we're doing all these little threads. It, it, we can, of course, develop them. Uh, but, you know, I think we should kind of stick to the flow of the game. Yeah. You know, we have these these characters at random spots, you know. And obviously, there's going to be a much larger map than in the game. 
But like, it, it's still made up of those tiles, and and I think there should be like virtual units. Yes. So, so like maybe a person, the leader, like takes up the space of one tile. Like they're as large as one tile. And then they look so down like, and they see the little. Yeah, men. they look down and they have these little like pixelated uh, soldiers or something like that. Yeah. So it's not like they're in, you know, these are trees that are 20 feet tall overhead. It's like very much a game board. I like that because that's it. Well, and then when you zoom in on the maps, you see the big, you know, figures showing what lands they're occupying, I think. Yeah. And we can have, we can have SM like overlooking this map and you see these like colored lands that are kind of shifting and moving as, as the borders of the game also shift and move. Let's and he, let's he go goes, ahead. Oh, Russia is spreading farther than I thought. <laughs> yeah. What if we go ahead and pick the ten that we want to the be ten. in? That's a lot. That's a lot of people. How about we do the three? Oh, come on. The ten. Let's pick the ten. You already said. I, you already said more than ten earlier. Well, yeah, but I mean, if we're gonna develop these people, we're gonna need. These to are go. the ones that we will be seeing the most out of all of the twenty. You said Gandhi, I like, and I think Gandhi's good for some jokes. I think Gandhi should be, like, top three for oh, sure. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. We're not going to decide who the winner is in this, though. Why not? I think I think we should we should leave that up to the audience after we pick the top three. Audience participation. So let's say we got Gandhi. I, I think I really do like Abraham Lincoln. I keep bringing him in. I'm going with Lincoln. I think we have Elizabeth. Yep. Uh, you said Darius Catherine. and Nebuchadnezzar. I think those are good. I'm good, I'm good with those two. We got Catherine the Great. We got um, let's toss uh, let's toss Oda Nobugana. Let me try that again. Uh, what was his name? Oda Nobunaga. Oba Nobunaga. Where they're from? That's Japan. Okay. We could have Wu Zedong of China. Okay, Wu Zedong of China. I think Attila. You think Attila? I don't. I want to. I want a brute character. That sticks around and, and actually seems like they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, but then kind of gets knocked out in an unexpected way. Has a change of heart. Like, they have a small little mini arc or something. We don't see much of Attila, and then, like, maybe they're all kind of grouped. Like, we have these two or three characters grouped together, like they have an alliance, and Lincoln's like, we must watch out for Attila. I know of him from history. He is very warlike. And then they see him, and he's got this, like, lush green fields. He's, wa- like this he's really like, like watering a little flower. Yeah, or like this really like tightly knit civilization. <laughs> he's like, oh, hello. I like that. Oh, I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, we could have Ramses the second in there. And uh, I think we should have, <laughs> oh man, should we have Caesar? Good old Caesar? Which one do you think would be out of, out of Rome and Greece? Which one do you think would be the funniest of the leaders? Or at least the one that we could work the most with out of popularity? Because Caesar's like Caesar. the go-to for... Caesar, yeah. Versus Alexander yeah. in Greece. Probably Caesar. All right. We could have a joke about him making a salad. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a dumb, that was a dumb thing you said. Uh, okay, I like that. So, yeah. So, what are these characters going to get up to? And it should, so, should it be, like, are these the top ten Characters? These are the characters that we will be seeing more often than not. I think, well, maybe not even that. These are the characters that by the end of the story, you're focusing on them because, yeah, they're the top ten left. And right. it's unexpected how they're reacting to things. Or not even that. It's just, it's humorous, the interactions they have with each other. Well, but yeah, we got to be careful that we don't, like, elevate these leaders. Be like, ah, oh, well, only these ten leaders were worth it. You know, like, get out of here, Korea. You suck. You know, no, we don't no, wanna, no. We don't and I'm not that. assuming that either. I just think we, once again, this is something based on our personal opinion. Uh, if we were going to be doing this more legitimately as a legitimate movie, then what we'd probably do is make we'd it kind of a forced, diverse thing. We'd have one leader from every nation yeah, you know. based on what the game would showcase. I like this choice better, though, because it gives me a very much, and I hate to reference this, clone high vibe, where you have these characters that are just characters of themselves sure, because they can be, <laughs> you know? I guess, and because yeah. they're popular, when you see Elizabeth and she's over there, beep, boop, 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 you know, on the computer, it's like, huh. <laughs> yeah, you know, you want to expect it that. So, uh, should we kind of work out some of these plot lines? Um, I think we, okay, let's think. What 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 kind of plot lines are we going to have to lay? I think we should have a, you know, a, an alliance pretty early on. And you could kind of, I think we should have some characters, probably from... I guess more modern eras who are kind of trying to stick to history 
you know, they have these preconceived notions. Mm, that would be so yeah. Lincoln. So Lincoln's like, all right, well, Han is Elizabeth, going to be dangerous, you know. Yeah, you know, it, Elizabeth is, it, which also plays into the idea because you can have these random personalities in the game, which I strongly recommend. <laughs> so like, no one really knows what to expect. And yeah, Lincoln can kind of be like, okay, Elizabeth is alive during my era. We actually know each other, so we can ally together. But Elizabeth don't want no part of it. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, yeah. So, the, whereas you have these older civs, these older leaders who are like, well, uh, you have Nebuchadnezzar down there. He says, well, Japan is my neighbor, so I, I will ask for an alliance. <laughs> I like that, yeah. It's just ba- Yeah, it's just based off what each leader would do. Yeah, I think that's good. I like that. Because they don't have the luxury of knowing history, like these more modern leaders. Right. And even without that, it's it's more of a sense of like, you'd have ones that would respond directly in violent ways or ones that would unexpectedly be like, well, let's form this alliance. Yeah, you know. exactly. I do think two two leaders need to have a, a romance thing just for the fun of it. We just got to make sure we don't get irreverent with it. Uh, man, that's that's a tough call then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Why don't we just have it be like more of a, a, a very good friendship? Okay. Like a bromance kind of thing. Yeah. Or girlmance. Girlmance? Or girl and boy romance, but they're just friends. Grope man. There's no weird sexual tension there. No, there's always weird sexual tension. With you. I see the way you look at me. <laughs> Over the podcast. Over the podcast waves. <laughs> when one of them gets eliminated, the other's like... No, I like that. Like they just start like t- destroying every, trying to destroy everything, and obviously failing. I'm trying to think of who who could pair with who, which would be unlikely and humorous with that kind of friendship. We could do like Caesar and I don't know Elizabeth or something. I think it should be something more like referential, and I and not obviously talking about actual history, but something where maybe well maybe actual history where maybe it's two nations that at a later or or. Or later time, maybe two earlier forms of nations that at a later point are just at each other's throats, you know, or something. I like that. And so yeah. instead... So like, so like when we think of these two countries, right. we're like, so oh, those guys like, are at war. You know, it could be like Darius and Nebuchadnezzar or something, you know? And it's like... Yeah. All of Persia and Arabia war. would later be, you know, this weird land where nobody agreed with each other. But back then they're like, oh, you come from this? Oh, that's so cool. You know, they're just like broing out about it. You know? Yeah. So it's so like for some countries we do very like stereotypical, not in a bad no, way, but like no. maybe we have a, a, a oh what's his name Adolphus in Sweden, and he's like, uh, he's like I am staying out of this fight, and you know you know because they're like the Balkans are always kind of uh, neutral, yeah, yep, and stuff. And then meanwhile you have like Attila the Hun who's like has this really like like all his people are super happy. And stuff, and he's like watering his garden. I like, and he's yeah. like, oh, I fought the pyramid. I think the the concept there, we just have this joke concept that he just never got to rule people, and he would have been great. You know, it's just we don't know. Uh, yeah, it's like it's like, oh, I, I was so young when I started fighting. Now I have a chance to start over. I like that. <laughs> he just he's just tired. I think we'd have think to remove God the joke did. from the beginning, but that would be still at work fine. You know. Yeah, I think we. Well, may- maybe we could still have it, but then, like, as he goes, he's like... I thought about this, you know, you know. Yeah, like, they're like, would you like to build the Hanging Gardens? And he's like, yeah, all right. I like, yeah, because he could be kind of... He could start off kind of like, harsh to, and be like, Where, how do yeah. I start a military? You know, and he can't he can't do it. And then all of a sudden, it's like all of these options, like... Like, he, like yeah, like, he, he's on a... Farmland. He's like, I'm ready to fight. And he, like, looks around him, but he's on this tiny little island. And he's like, huh. <laughs> I think that would actually be great. So when they find him on his island, he's just really calm and peaceful. Yeah. He's like, oh, I forgot there were other people out there. Oh, I like that. Uh, I think Gandhi, and again, we don't want to get irreverent, but if we're doing the nuke thing with Gandhi, which I think we We, should just because because it's like, that's like the the one kind of meme around Civ V. I think think Gandhi should kind of be, not the protagonist, but like one of the main is the most main ones yeah. that we see a lot. And I think he should start out trying to like form this like peaceful thing. Kind of the reverse of what Attila does, but not directly. Yeah, and like like he he sees uranium and obviously like he doesn't really know what uranium is cuz he died kind of before. What I, you know what would be interesting. Got, yeah. 
once again, I, I think they see it once again as this kind of they some characters see it as a way to change who they are, of course, with the Attila joke. But I think some characters like Gandhi, they as it goes on, they kind of do start to see it a bit as a game. Not in the sense of like, oh, it's all just fun, but it's like maybe Gandhi does something. He's like, oh, that's terrible. But that was hilarious. You know, and he's like, he's looking at it in a different way. And he's like, I'm going to do that again. You know, and he drops. Or like, oh, yeah. Or like he's trying to befriend, I don't know, France or something. He accidentally and, and, like you know, books him. Or I'd say they attack him and like they get eliminated, but he already has a thirst for blood. <laughs> and then someone says, yeah, like, you know, he looks at his inventory or someone says, Mr. Gandhi, we, we, we've discovered uranium. And he says, interesting. <laughs> what, what can this do? What can we <laughs> no, do that would be, with this? Like, so what can we do with your radio? And then it cuts and you're looking from some other character's perspective and off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It cuts back. I like that. <laughs> you know, just... let's, he says, let's build some more of those. Yeah, that'd be good. So how about, what if I name some other kind of elements of the game and then we kind of work, see how we can work those into Let's the do it. And again, like I said, this is specifically Civ Five because that's the one I have the most exposure. Yeah, and to. it's the current. I think it's, it's also, currently the most popular compared. By I would sales. say even with even with Civ Six, yeah. it's, everyone kind of likes Civ Five more. Sorry, sorry, Sid. I mean, Sid doesn't care. He's getting paid. <laughs> um, so there's city states in the game which you can't control. No player can control them, but they're kind of AI controlled. And they can ally with you. They can give you bonuses, stuff like that. I think we could introduce that early on and say, you know, SM could be like, I will be having some of my minions join you in the game. And those would be the AI. So they're, okay. not, they're not anybody important, but they're also players, you know? Yeah. So they like, yeah, they have real, like, they're not just land. Yeah. I mean, you could have a minion who's like, because min- uh, city states are very fickle. You can have one. Maybe like, I don't uh, want to team up with anybody. Yeah, like Darius is like, come on, let me uh, let me protect you. He's like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I like that. Uh, there's also, I mean, culture is a big element of the game, but it's really, I mean, it's very abstract. You know, I think so we're you have taking like, it, we're taking some definite liberties in our story, and I think that's fine to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just tossing ideas out there just to see if there's anything, <laughs> seeing what sticks. Uh, there's all right. So there's great, so there's great um, wonders. So like you know you can build the pyramid, right? You can build the Great Wall stuff. of China. What if Should we include those? Yeah, oh, can't, in the game. So are you limited to what is the wonder of your nation? No, you can build literally. Anything. That really would should come into play. I think that should be funny. Is like somebody like Elizabeth, like Ramses is looking at his thing. He's like, "This is coming together really nice." I have this great idea for a structure, and he looks over to Elizabeth's got the pyramid, and he's like, "Wait, wait, that's that's mine." That's mine. You know, and he's getting. You know. <laughs> I like that. Um, you, uh, let's see. You also have great works. So, like, famous pieces of art, famous pieces of writing. Yeah. Books like that. Um, what else do you have? You have barbarians, which are AI, and they just kind of roam the map and like attack you. They, Those can pretty... just be little digital things that pop in, and it's like, wait, who who's this? And it's like, oh, this is this. These are no one, you know. <laughs> these are barbarians. Then let's think of some other things that are already implemented and how we could turn them into jokes. Okay. If we've got the concept of these kind of character personalities, yeah. And we're already setting up how we want some of them to interact with the world. And obviously, the the differences from what we know in history regarding characters right. like Attila or Gandhi or whatever. Whomever, yeah. Do you think we should go closer to, other than the ones that we've listed, should we generally go closer to what their personalities are showcased as? Or would you want to kind of stray further and further as the game goes on? I think it could, I think you can have some that are very, you know kind of one note and then you have characters like Attila where this like almost the exact opposite. So Ramses would be very would, one note. He's like he's exactly what yeah. you would have expected from a up up like high a and mighty noble pharaoh Egyptian. Yeah. And then you have someone like Attila or someone like Gandhi just changes like they, completely. Yeah, now that they've experienced now that they have this kind of stuff in their power that they've never had the ability to do before. Yeah. Uh, I think we should we should uh, see should we have the character? Should we should we try to work on this character who tries to escape? You know, you have this character who's like not really into the game, or maybe it's a character that's like losing real bad. <laughs> they just want to leave. Yeah, 
I don't know. If we give it the option for them to quit and we do a joke with somebody accidentally quitting, yeah, then it kind of deserves the purpose. I think somebody should That's try fair. to escape so that they can get the prize without having to win the game. All right. So you have the yeah, you have this one character who's like sneaking through the they're not even in the game. They're sneaking through the base. And that can, can we can kind of establish a little more of SM from that. Oh yeah, too. We could create a uh, a, a unique character for that, too. Or would you want it to be a historical figure? It'd probably be a leader. Okay. Maybe a leader who's known as a thief or something. Yeah. Sticky fingers. I mean, I mean, or just a, or just a more, nefarious individual. Like, that'd be yeah, a thief that's like more not like stealing money, but like stealing countries <laughs> and stuff like that. Once again, I would like to introduce you to Adolf. Um, <laughs> we can't have Adolf represent Germany. Not Germany. Just he's there because he was, he was. They have to represent a civilization. <laughs> Or a nation. He represents the nation of the whites. The Aryans. Oh, boy. No, it can't be Hitler. <laughs> you know, I'm sure... You take away all you my know, some, like Someone who conquered a lot of land. You know, it could be Rome. That's true. You we know? could have Rome. Could be Caesar. Yeah. Caesar was not... Could be, and, yeah. He didn't have a good Like, run. he gets caught and Let's we... be honest. He got... Hey, Rome, you know... he was. I mean, he was a lieutenant in the army. He... he Took over Gaul and then Britannia, so he he definitely ha- would have experience. Oh, I know that, but I'm just talking about at the end of his reign. You could say it was what, cut what short. Got, well, he got stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> we could make it. We could definitely make a joke about that. Oh yeah, that would be good. Or no, he could. Oh, this would be this would be way too. So he gets he does break out. I think maybe he does break out. There's like a vent or something that's. Uh, yeah, he figures and a minion some way finds out. it. You know, a minion is on the map wandering, around, and he says, "Uh oh." And he says, you know, and he, and he calls it in. And so he fixes it. The minion fixes it, you know, because they want to keep the game going. And, and SM's right. like, okay, we'll keep an eye out for him. You know, and I think there could be a thing where he's crawling through vents and he's doing stuff. And he's like, you know, he's checking it. He, he would be way too knowledgeable than he should be. He's like finding his way through here. Or he's just clever. And I think yeah. maybe it would be a thing. He's like, oh, my goodness. There were so many, you know, there were so many, you know, uh, twisted pieces of metal in there. I got, you know, st- I got cut. I got cut so many times. With something stupid like yeah. that. <laughs> My back hurt. <laughs> what if there's a joke where someone can't pronounce someone else's name? <laughs> that would, we could still do that. Even with the language thing we set up, I think we could still do that. Well, everyone's speaking English, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, maybe they meet the, the Incans. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and someone's like, what is your name? And he says, Pacha Kuti. And so, Pachajuiki? Pa- no. Pacha Kuti. What if that was like <laughs> literally... Yeah, there's like there's like an English figure or something. He's like, I don't want to pronounce that. That does not sound like sorry. That does not sound like it would go in my church. You know, or something. What if, what if, what if like, that's kind of the one gag between uh, the Incans and the other character? And like, they kind of make it towards the end. They have this strong alliance. Like, they show up on someone's doorstep. And they're like... I and Pakuzushi are here to cock you. <laughs> Please do not say my name. <laughs> Please, you messed it up again. I'm working on it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, is there anything else to talk about I here? think we've set it up. Oh, man. There's a, a lot episode. in the air, but I think there has to be. Because if we already decide who the winners are going to be, we're going to be not only assuming a lot here, but we're also going to be placing a lot of stress on the idea that this film would have to be yeah. made with these specific characters because other than the jokes that we that i definitely think we need to have with attila and gandhi and characters sure. like lincoln and caesar yeah, and, all well, that and elizabeth and whatever those can end up being taking more of a back seat if better characters that better represent the games you know come into play because my my only my only question is, do you think it's enough to like hold a movie, like a solid oh, 80, yeah. 90 minute movie? Because we have we have basically three plots. Too... We have plot A, which is the introduction of the story in the game, and we see that from the character. Plot A will jump around to different characters, and plot A will change depending on who we see. Plot B right. is Caesar is now trying to get through the facility and get out on his own and be like, you know, oh, I'll get this and escape and all this and. I think we can have a few yeah. gags with him, but it's more like he's situationally in different things, you know, and it's different events are happening around him right. that or different events maybe are even happening yeah. on the board that change the way that the underside of the big machine that they're in works, you know, or something. 
It's like, yeah, like like someone someone nukes a big city or something. Like the the game shakes and Caesar's like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. And then we have yeah, SM that's, his plot his, would be kind of the third thing. plot, which is he, seeing the real version of him and having to deal with all this situation. You know, and it, maybe he's getting also some side enjoyment out of like, oh, Caesar's trying to do something, you know, sneaky. Oh, I love it. You know. I never would have thought it would be yeah, him. Oh, who am I leads it on a menu? No, who am I kidding? You know? <laughs> oh, I knew it would be him. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that is the uh, Civilization movie. We probably yeah. just call it Civilization. This is, uh, anything else we need to say? I think, uh, I think good old SM needs to reprise his role as SM. SM. Who? I have the foggiest idea of who you mm, mean. Maybe we should keep it that way. I think it'd be. I think it's a fun movie. Are we think trying to gear this more towards oh, kids definitely or like people who have played adults? The game. Not everybody, but I think it's it's more people who have played the game will get more enjoyment out of it than adults. But I think it is more of a adult film with without. It's not Sausage Party, but it's also not. Yeah, not know. in the way that we're gonna be like cussing and stuff i mean we can i guess i don't care but like it's not adult in an irreverent or kind of uh right it's adult in the way. humor which is like oh you gotta know who caesar is you have to know who this is and most kids aren't gonna know who yeah. the, the history behind characters like oba whatever you know right they don't care Bakutiku. yeah gonna be a heck of a heck of a Ikumbo. movie to the market i wish i would i wish our market <laughs> try to do this one Try to find that audience that's going to be I think, <laughs> this one. I think if we, in the marketing, if we lean more towards the humor in it and show bits of just the humor, I think that'll grab people because they'll be like, oh, it's like a funny fake history movie. We just, we just get Monty Python to write That would actually be the perfect thing. Get any kind of comedy writer yeah, there who we go. can make absolute fools of real figures. That's all we want. Yeah, just like a very famous uh, a comedy writer or comedy troupe where it's like, Oh, it's the, it's yeah. the next blank movie. Is there like, oh, here you go. Let's wrap up. Well, uh, if you liked it, <laughs> we did. Then share I the liked show. It. Remember, the subtitle is Speculation Station. I like that. <laughs> we all say it 50 times an episode. And uh, if we don't say it that much, they will kill us. Who exactly? Well, we don't know. I know who it's not. It's not Sid Meier. Huh? <laughs> who? If you like their show... Share it. We're on several, several platforms. More than I can All ever of them. name. I could name them. Oh, you want to? Sure. Uh, share us on Apple Podcasts. You know, help rate the show. Uh, follow us. Uh, you know, that's ha- that helps us kind of get on the charts and g- get our show more more ear ear holes. Uh, we're also on Spotify and pretty much any other podcast medium uh, based on Simplecast, so you can go there as well. Uh, and you can find all of our stuff, including our podcast and other shows that we have, videos, etc., on our website, which is speculative realism. That's realism with two e's. dot com. And uh, you will also find there our Patreon. If you like what we do and you want to see us continue to do this or listen to us continue to do this, then please consider supporting us on that. It really does help, and it allows us to wake up in the morning and say, you know what, we can make this Feeling happen. Feeling like P Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had that happen twice. Um, and uh, if you got any ideas, if you like, why don't you guys cover this game? Why don't you cover that game? Shoot it to us. Uh, or if you're like, hey, I had this really cool g- movie idea for Ace Combat 7. Send it to us. I mean, we'll take it. We read every email we got. That's my full-time job. Uh, you know, share with us anything you got. Ideas. Or critique or whatever. You know, there's a very collaborative process we have out here. We'll make sure to credit you with what you give and we'll definitely of course. share the idea. Unless you have unless you have a name with a cuss in it. Then we can't credit That's you. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry cussin. He's my cussin. <laughs> He's my cussin. Twice cousin. removed. You can follow us on Twitter and other social medias. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well, but you're mostly gonna get right. our little uh, statements, I guess, on Twitter. St- statements are PR statements. <laughs> if you want to follow us and hear what we have to say, eh, Twitter? Twitter's probably the best bet. But we are in other places. Yeah, you already said those. You going to tell us, tell them our handle? 
on all those places, we're at Spec Real, which once again is real with two E's like a film reel. Ding dong, ding dong. Oh, you know what that means. It looks like it's time for us to head off. Uh, we are we are pulling out of the speculation station. I just saluted for some reason. <laughs> and we'll see you at the next stop. A choo-choo. Bye. Bye.